Okay, so this is the last page, page four. So we're just going to look at a function that's written algebraically instead of on a graph and then determine the domain. So remember, the domain is what can we plug into the function. So it's the x values or the values that we're plugging into the function. So let's look at the first one. All right, so g of x is negative x to the third plus 7x squared plus 17. So the first thing that we should always ask with these problems is, are there any issues here? And so what I mean by issues is, are there any numbers that we can't plug into this function? Maybe I should draw some lines here. So are there any numbers we can't plug in? If you're unsure, you can start by drawing a number line and testing some weird values. So I'll tell you some values that are, in, that are good to check. So maybe we can do a, num a number table. Um, so g of x. All right, so good numbers to try would be maybe like 0 maybe something positive, something negative, so you can kind of get a variety of the types of numbers to plug in just to make sure you're going to get an answer out. And we do. So when we plug in 0 here, we get 17. When we plug in 1, we get 23. When we plug in negative 2, we get 37. And so you may want to think about other numbers to try to plug in here and think, is there any number that I could plug in that won't? give me an answer. And so you should be able to plug in any number that you want. So that means the domain of this function is all real numbers. You can plug in anything. So in interval notation, maybe I'll make a note here. We can plug in anything. So whenever you can plug in anything, the domain of the function is negative infinity to positive infinity. So all of the numbers on a number line. So this is our domain for the first one. All right, next, let's talk about the domain of the square root of 4x plus 5. All right, so... First thing, are there any issues here? Okay, are there any issues here? You should think possibly because we have a square root. And what do we know about square root functions? There's something we can't plug in. We can't plug in anything negative. So for example, if you look at my calculator, and I take the square root of something like, I don't know, negative 5, my calcula calculator would say domain error. That means I plugged in something that's not in the domain of the function, and I can't get an answer. So we can't plug in negative numbers in a square root function. So I'm going to write that down. So we can't take the square root of a negative. So whenever you see a square root, you should say there's a warning sign here. We can't take the square root of a negative. So what does that tell us? That means 4x plus 5 can't be negative. So what's the opposite of negative? It's positive. Could it be 0? Well, let's check. Let's take the square root of 0. Oh, square root of 0 is just 0. That's fine to do. 
So that means 4x plus 5 should be positive or 0. So how do we do this algebraically? Well, we just take 4x plus 5. We want to make sure it's positive or 0. So we want to make sure it's greater than or equal to 0. And so now we can just solve this inequality for x. So I'm going to subtract the 5 from both sides. And I'm going to divide by 4. So x must be greater than or equal to negative 5 over 4. And so we, the way we write our domain we can, is by using a number line. Let's put negative 5 over 4 on a number line. And our answer says that x must be greater than or equal to. So already we see or equal to. So I'm going to put a closed dot greater than, so x must be bigger. So x can be all of these values here, negative 5 over 4, or anything bigger than that. So to answer our question, the domain of this function is from negative 5 over 4 to infinity. All right, so let's talk about what we're going to have. We're going to have a bracket here because we can include negative 5 over 4. And for infinity, we actually never get to infinity. It's not a real number. So we put a parenthesis. So this is our domain. All right, finally, let's look at the last one. Um, 1 over x squared minus 14. Again, our number one question to ask, are there any issues? So can you think of any issues that we could have with a fraction? There's one big one. We can't divide by 0. That's our issue. So again, I can use my calculator to verify this. 1 divided by 0, divide by 0 error. We cannot divide by 0. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that x squared minus 14 cannot be 0 because we can't divide by 0. All right, so how do we use this to define the domain? Well, we just do algebra, algebra again x squared minus 14 cannot be 0, so I'm going to say x squared minus 14 cannot be 0. And so now I can solve for x to see what x cannot be. So I'm adding 14 on both sides. Okay, solving for x, I need to take the square root of both sides. But one thing to remember, when we take the square root, we could have either had a positive square root of 14 or a negative square root of 14, because a negative squared is still positive. So we get two answers that x cannot be. So again, we put this on a number line. So negative 14 would be over here, positive root 14 over here. X cannot be any of those numbers, so I'm going to put open circles here. So that's the only restriction. X can be anything else except those numbers. So that means we can use this number line to write out the domain of our function. So x can be from negative infinity to negative square root of 14. We don't want to include it because x cannot be square root of 14. Union, it can also be from negative root 14 to positive root 14. Union. 
from root 14 to infinity. All right, so domain is typically the trickiest topic for students in this class. But remember, we can figure it out by asking the question, are there any issues? And we know we have issues with square roots as well as with fractions. All right, so make sure you answer these questions. And if you are confused about something, feel free to ask me in class.